go, Charger fans. Welcome back to another weekly injury update with Jameson uh, at Chargers Medical on Twitter. You can find all my real or live updates uh, there. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter as well. Um, apologize for the recording setup today. It's not as, uh, norm- as it normally is. I'm actually out of country in Dublin, Ireland right now. Uh, but I still wanted to come and give you guys uh, a little bit of update and some injury information uh, for this uh, critical match against the Jets. The Chargers trying to get back to 500. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. This will be the week nine edition. Um, again, the eighth game the Chargers played. They looked pretty good last week against the Bears. Um, and fortunately, uh, only one kind of major setback uh, was Joshua Palmer after that game. Um, so the things I want to talk about uh, this week, week nine, it's Jets week. I apologize for the graphics a little bit here. Production value a little bit lower today. But um, big thing I want to talk about is the PUP return for Guyman in Ovonia and what's that looking like? What's the most up-to-date information that we have? Uh, recording about uh, three uh, o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, uh, West Coast time. Um, Josh Palmer's uh, injury, what we know, um, he has been ruled out as of about an hour ago and will not play in this game. But I'll talk about kind of what we can expect from him moving forward. And then we'll take a quick look at the injury report for the Jets as well as a couple of late additions for the Chargers and whether there's anything we have to be worried about there. So uh, PUP returns uh, for uh, Guyton and Abonia is this week we finally see them. They had a full week of practice last week. Neither of them were activated prior to game time, so neither could play. Uh, but what do we know about this week? Well, we do know definitively that Guyton says that he wants to play and is, is incorporated into the game plan and will play this week. Um, that is reassuring. We haven't heard the same thing for Obonia. However, I do want to talk about this 21-day activation window. So. Both players were uh, had their practice window activated on, um, I believe it was October 19th, um, and that would put their 21-day window closing on Thursday of next week on November 9th. So that's five days from now. Um, so that also means that the Chargers don't have to activate them for this game. They could activate them middle of next week and still keep them on the active roster for the rest of the season. However, if they do not activate them to the active roster and that deadline passes, I think those players are ineligible to play for the rest of the season. They actually remain on IR. Um, so, uh, again, Guyton, I'm, I'm fairly sure we'll see um, some roster moves. Again, both these players would have to be activated and signed to the active roster, meaning two players from the active roster would have to be um, cut. Uh, unclear exactly who those would be. Um, the Chargers do have four tight ends, so potentially one of those for Guyton. Who knows really for Obonia where that last cut would be, um, I think. Dotson's still an active roster, so potentially another offensive cut there. But we'll have to be uh, we'll have to see what those cuts will be. Again, for Guyton, those cuts will have to, I think they have to occur about 24 hours ahead of game time. So likely sometime tomorrow. Keep an eye on the Chargers accounts and Daniel Popper and other you know, beat reporters uh, for that information about who's cut and whether these uh, Guyton, just Guyton is activated or Guyton and Obonia. I think both of them could be activated for this game. They both have those two weeks. Guyton, I expect to play for sure. Obonia, more of a 50-50 shot, but given that his window is closing, given that he's practicing well, I do expect that um, we see him activated very shortly, probably for this game. Uh, and then this is a uh, one I kind of want to spend a little bit more time on. Fortunately, the only big injury setback for uh, the game against the Bears, but uh, Josh Palmer and this knee injury. So he initially suffered this, this injury in week seven against the Chiefs. Um, a little bit unclear exactly what it was and um, he was limited in practice but he was able to go against the bears we saw him go down off a slant route um early on against the bears and um you know you hate to see players go down and be in that much pain it looked like he was in pretty severe pain he grabbed that knee instantly hard to tell whether he got rolled up on or or how exactly he aggravated it but it, you know it was scary from a, from a medical perspective looking at it because it kind of looked like a soft tissue injury um, something, you know, could be as disastrous as an ACL or MCL. That's initially where my head went when I saw the injury. Fortunately, he was taken off the field, able to walk off uh, with some help, evaluated, eventually returned to the game, which is really reassuring. Um, that, to me, uh, rules out any really serious pathology. Um, so something that would be season-ending, for example, like uh, an ACL injury. Um, and puts us in a category of, probably some type of potentially MCL injury or other type of uh, kind of knee swelling or injury as well. It's a little unclear exactly what it was. 
Um, he was able to play through it for the rest of the game, and he actually had a, at least a few cut passes towards the end of the game. And then uh, this week, he was DMP all week, so no mobility at all, and is ruled out for this game, I believe. Um, I actually, that for sure ruled out. So um, unclear exactly what this knee injury is. We'll have to wait for a little bit more information and see what he is looking like for his practice reports next week. But I don't think it's going to be anything super serious where we're missing him for extended periods of time. I do expect to have him back probably in the next week, if not the week after that. Um, just probably keeping an eye on that knee, watching the knee swelling, getting it time to heal. If it truly is an MCL sprain, which they haven't said that or not, it would probably be on the, the order of one to two weeks, maybe a little bit longer uh, for him. So we'll see exactly um, what it is. We'll have more information when they, when they announce that, and then we can kind of a better idea about when we can expect him back. But uh, with the fact that Guyton has potentially coming back this week, there's a little less pressure on him to play through this injury. That could also be playing in the fact that he was ruled out ahead of time. And finally, let's just take a quick look at the injury report here. Um, other notable ones from the Chargers, just quick hits here. Uh, Justin Herbert looked really good last week. Again, uh, still has that finger injury, still monitoring it. He's going to be playing in that splint for the foreseeable future, but he's looking to get more comfortable with it. Uh, Morgan Fox was limited, but had a full practice for his an oblique injury. Uh, Eric Kendricks was limited with a rib injury, but is, uh, both are questionable, but I expect them to play. Um, and lastly, we had a Spash and Joseph Day was added with an illness um, late in the uh, injury report on Saturday. He didn't practice uh, on, on Saturday. Uh, and these players, like illnesses are hard to judge. It could be something like a simple flu. It could be something a little bit more serious, uh, like a food poisoning. And it's a little bit hard to determine, uh, you know, if those players will be good enough to play. Um, usually with enough hydration, maybe a little assistance in some IV hydration and, and rest, those players can actually do it. And finally, uh, Kenneth Murray uh, added a little bit midweek with a shoulder injury. I am also, he was limited, so didn't have a full practice. Um, I, I do expect him to probably try to play through this injury, um, but he's on the questionable side, so it's something to watch out um, in that 90-minute warm-up period game time if he's active or not. Uh, and lastly, let's get over to the Jets. Uh, the most notable one is Dwayne Brown. Uh, their offensive lineman will, will not be activated, so he won't play this week. Um, he's officially out, as well as their linebacker, Chaz Surratt. Um, but on the, on the pro side for the Jets is they got a lot of their, their offensive line uh, uh, back. Uh, Mackay Becton uh, and Joe Tittman and Lincoln Tomlinson in particular, though all those players will play this week. Um, they've had some trouble with their offensive line, had a lot of different starting combinations this season. Um, hasn't helped Zach Wilson at all. So they're at least getting some semblance of their normal offensive line back, but not having um, doing, uh, doing Brown as well is, is a little bit of a um, problem for them and something that the defensive line for the Chargers, especially Joey Bosa and um, and Mac will try to build on this week as they uh, play the Jets. Nothing uh, else particularly notable here except for Alan Lazard. So they have a lot of wide receivers uh, on this uh, list that are expected to play this week, and most notably Randall Cobb, etc. However, um, Alan Lazard was a late addition with what's a, a knee injury. He's truly questionable for the game. So we'll have to, again, keep an eye on nine minutes prior to kickoff to see is that if he's uh, active for that game or whether they will keep him active, but that would be a potentially significant injury or loss for the, um, for the Jets. Um, he is their number two wide receiver. Um, their offense is already uh, one of the worst in the league and losing uh, a little bit more talent will not help them at all. So something to, to keep an eye on and see whether the, the Chargers can, uh, defense can really get back uh, to true form this week. And that's it for me, guys. So thanks for tuning in to another uh, weekly injury update with Jameson. Again, you can find all my stuff on Twitter at, on X, sorry, at Chargers Medical. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to, to give me a follow there and send me a message. Um, I try to do real-time updates as well um, during games when I see stuff or just kind of what, what I'm seeing with injuries as they come out in real time. Um, I'm unclear whether I'll be able to watch this one and the next one because I'll be in Ireland. Uh, and the time difference is a little bit rough. Um, so, uh, let's just stay tuned uh, for just kind of more delayed updates on that, but moving forward for the rest of the season, I'll be back in the country. So, um, you'll be able to see those there, but 
It's always a pleasure, guys. Let's hope the Chargers can get back to 500 this week um, and bolt up.